Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. If you're from outside the US and you're wondering how you get all the latest Google Home features, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So there's basically two components that you're going to need to manage in order to get all of the latest features or be as far as you can in your country. You're still not going to be able to do certain things like make phone calls if you're in a country that doesn't have that yet available. Although I think there's an upgrade path coming for everyone, but we'll talk about that in other videos. But right now, what you wanna do is get your application as far ahead as you can. And in order to do that, we have to manage the language on your device. So I'm going to show you in an iPhone and then I'll do a quick tutorial on an Android device to show you how you can manage this. So first off, you're going to go into the settings for your iPhone or your Android device. Now in an iPhone, we go to the general settings and then we scroll down and we go to language and region. Now I found that it helps actually to change your region as well in certain cases, but in general for most people, what I'll tell you, all you have to do is change the iPhone language. So you can simply go in, change it to English US, and once you've done that, reboot your phone. So go through a full reboot, reboot sorry, and then let your phone come back up. What you will find at that point, as you go into the Google Home application, is that you should see some changes in terms of the features you have access to. One of the best examples is what we've talked about recently on the channel, and I'm going to go into the settings here, scroll down, go to more settings, and you know, on an Android device, you just go to that account page and then the settings page. And once you're in there, if you go to assistant, what you'll find is some extra access to languages and you should see the words continued conversation sitting right there. If you don't, then you may need to wait a little bit, get an upgrade of the application, those kinds of things can help just a little bit of a delay and uh, another upgrade or update of the application, but leave your phone in that English US if you can handle it. Now you can also do this with a tablet, so keep that in mind. If you needed to, you could set up with a tablet, have the Google Home application on there, it could be an Android or an iPad, and then from there make those changes and go into the application that way. So, you know, you can have a device that's specifically basically ready to do this. Now, continued conversation, again, this is a great example. Now, here in Canada, we have access to continued conversations, but my smart display sitting over here has continued conversation on it and that's really only available in the US. Now we'll talk about once we have all the features here inside the application, how do we go ahead and get them onto products like this? That's the second part of the conversation. So number one, now that I have continued conversations available, I can go ahead and I can check that off and then it will apply to all the devices that are capable of this. Now in order to get the devices capable of this, we need to do a very similar thing in our languages setting. And we're gonna do a couple of uh, switches around here, but essentially if you have English United States as the first language here, you're going to be able to use a feature like continued conversations. It should work totally. I, I haven't heard of anyone that's really struggled with this in any country yet. So once you have it at the top there, you're good. Now, I wanna show you one nuance to this very quickly or very briefly. So if I change this to, let's say, English Canada, and then I go, now I have English Canada and French Canada here in my two languages, and you'll notice that the smart display screen has shown up with English US. If it says anything other than English US, I would recommend that you change that to English US. Right now, I think there's a little bit of a bug inside the Google Home application that really stops this from working. If you ever change that, even if you go back and you change that first language to English US. So again, make sure that's English US on the bottom, then come back, 
choose English United States, and it will basically set all of your devices for its first language to English US, but you can still utilize your native language with the device in most cases. Obviously with a smart display, they're not showing anything other than English on the devices at this point. They just haven't done that kind of work. Now, this will put you basically as far as you can get with all of your settings, all of your capabilities, all of the features that you're wanting from your Google Home. So I wanna give you a couple of examples of things that should become available to you depending on the country that you're in. We already talked about continued conversations, but routines is a very impactful side of the Google Home products. And if you leave your device in these settings, if you leave your phone or your iPad or your Android device in these settings, then you should be able to access routines and run routines on your device. The other thing that should show up is more voices inside of the assistant voice section. Now inside the assistant voice section, what you'll notice is that I have access to something called British Racing Green and there's a Sydney Blue uh, right next to it as well. So this is what they what we talked about on the channel a little while about uh, a while ago about accents and so this is essentially the British accent that you can use with English US language and this is I think a bit of a peace offering to hopefully bridge the gap with those two countries basically you can have an assistant that sounds like someone will speak in in your country but you can use it with the English US language so you get access to more of these features I expect this list to grow significantly over time and be organized a little bit of a different way as we go. But that's an option for those of you who are in the UK or Australia and want access to most of those features. Things that this won't do, and we should talk about that as well. Now, it will not give you access to make phone calls, like I said, but my upgrade path or what I get the sense of, of what's going on here is Google Duo Audio phone calls will be the method that we will use to make phone calls and then that it should be worldwide or relatively worldwide relatively quickly the other things you know reservations they just don't have the services set up in other countries and even here in Canada I mean we're directly north of the US we don't have access to that so the payments is kind of the same thing uh, I can put in payment information but I can't buy from lots of the US shops they just don't ship so Google's kind of closed off lots of those things so those are some examples there's obviously going to be a few more examples out there but those are some examples of things that you still will not be able to utilize and you shouldn't expect that right now from Google and from making these adjustments in your product. Now there's just one more thing I want to tell you about and I think this is important for lots of you who have been struggling having the Google Home device understand you and actually respond to some of the queries that you're making. If you go into any of your Google Home devices and you go into the settings, what you will see up at the top if you haven't already done this there's an upgraded version of voice match out there and this is important to get certain personal results and to have it be a little more accurate for you so what you will see up at the top is a yellow banner basically that shows up and says voice match is available and you'll think well I already did voice match so why are you asking me update that go through it again create a new voice model if it asks you to because it is uh, an improved model for voice match for Google Home users. Another thing that's very important for you to do inside of the application is to go to settings and then go to the account preferences. Once you're in there, what I want you to do is to go into email notifications. Now, there is down at the bottom of this screen, a preview program for your Chromecasts and your Google Home. And I want you to turn that on because in your country, what that will do is Number one, give you access to the most recent firmware updates, the re most recent cast firmware updates, and this will push you further ahead than a lot of the world. What it does do on the flip side, and what you should understand, is that the preview program sometimes puts things out that are a little bit buggy and this is how in some ways Google gets this reputation for treating us as testers, but in general what they put out is relatively stable but you will find once in a while 
some of those features won't work perfectly for you. And a great example of that has been uh, the new list integration or the new list creation method. That has been rolling out to people on the preview programs at different levels, at different states. And at one point, as I added another list because I was on the preview program, it kind of broke my shopping list and I had to go and delete that other list and revert back. So now the other thing is lots of countries don't have access to these products. So, you know, the Google Home Hub is a great example of something that honestly here in Canada I still don't have access to I can't buy one of these at a Best Buy or I and I can't buy one online from Google directly they just won't send it to us and these are language restrictions and there's also device restrictions in terms of you know here in Canada they need a CSA type of approval here to actually send that up here so that's some of the problems sometimes countries have really rigid uh, restrictions are really rigid certification processes and so that can stop technology and I think in Australia if you kind of look at lots of things uh, there that's the sense I'm getting is that it's a really restrictive environment to deploy a new product in and so you can't necessarily get these now how do I get these up in Canada I, I don't have any friends down in the US well I barely have any friends anyways but I, I don't have any friends down in the US that send me this stuff. Um, what I do is I either go to eBay and you can go to the eBay for your country and usually you will find an option there to buy one of these devices outright. What I'll tell you is that can be expensive. Sometimes those vendors are really jacking up the price. Now the other option is a site called Parcel. So parcl.com and I worked with Parcel at one point on the channel here because quite honestly I was using their service to get lots of Amazon's products up here and what I find is what you're essentially getting is the retail cost plus some fees from the person who's going to essentially repackage and reship that product to you. Now what's nice about that service as far as I'm concerned versus say uh, you know eBay is you can ask them to open up the product before they send it and test it So make sure it's get it gets plugged in that costs you a little bit of money But then you get the product and you know it's going to work when you get that open because obviously it's going to be difficult for me to replace or return one of these to, to Google if I ever have a problem now on top of that you can do things like have the customs work done and and all of those are little adders and but what you can do is you put out a bid and this will help you uh, as you put out that bid to choose the one you're most comfortable with they have reputations they have ratings and I think it's a really positive service for someone who just wants to get ahead and get some of this smart technology in their country. Now, one of the concerns with Google Home products, for example, the Wi-Fi frequencies uh, can be different in certain countries or you can have different frequencies for different things in, in other countries. So it may not be compatible and that's a warning I get every time I set up my Google Home Hub, it says, I'm from a different country, this might not be compatible in your country, so click OK at your own risk, essentially. So you have to look that up. I mean, this is at 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, and if your country or your router has that capability to broadcast at that frequency, well then you're good to go. Now that's relatively comprehensive. This gives you as much as I think is possible out there. As I said, some of those features are still not going to work like making phone calls until Google kind of solves the overall infrastructure pro problem uh, that they have right now. So you're going to need to wait on certain features, but this should give you access to lots of these things in your smart home. So I hope this has helped. If it has, go ahead, click that like, click that subscribe, join up with us here because I will show you all of the tips and tricks with your Google Home products and of course lots of other smart home technologies and products here on Automate Your Life. So thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time.